so people are there all Good right to start yep we're ready to go thanks Hi everyone, good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about how the team can be able to break free from the shackles of agile anti-pattern. Before it, a bit about me. I'm having 12 plus year of experience in project management. I'm certified in PMP, ITIL, CSM and CSPO. I worked in three different industries, finance, biomedical and IT. I implemented proactively many strategies in my company to build support portfolio. You can get in touch with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or on Drupal.org profile. First of all, I think I can talk a bit more about what is Agile Antipathies. What it comes in mind when we hear this term? For me, when I heard about it, it looked like to me a very fancy term. And I was thinking, okay, it must be something like fancy and we need not to talk about it. But then I realized all of my projects, all of my teams are impacted because of it. I read more about it and then start reducing its impact. Agile anti-patterns are something which are reducing the benefits of Agile. Every team start developing some norms. A quick example, like uh, let's do retro in two sprints, not in every sprint, once in two sprints or once in a month, even if a sprint is weekly or let the team lead and product owner do the backlog grooming or sprint planning. So similarly, there are many team norms we, we start developing. And in the end, those are called agile anti-patterns because these are limiting the good benefits of agile. About my company, it's excellent. We are around 200 people working from eight plus countries. We help digital change maker make change. Our client includes agencies, enterprises, bigger and small organizations. Hi from Excellent. I'm working from India. Let's talk about our agenda points. And uh, first of all, how we can identify the agile anti patterns? We know what are agile anti patterns, some team norms which are reducing the benefits of agile. But in the end, how you know what is Agile anti-pattern and what is not. So we'll talk about it. We will also talk about it, that how bugs can be treated differently from usual stories. One of the biggest Agile anti-pattern is we treat bugs similar to usual stories, giving them story points and extra. Talk more about it. Daily standups, badly impacted because of Agile anti-pattern. They're not getting goods of Agile in these DSM meetings how we can make it more effective. There are some tips and tricks. Sprint velocities. Sprint velocity will be definitely in the end going to be impacted because of change request, agile anti-patterns, and we have to see how we can avoid that. Mini waterfalls. You must have heard about it. In a sprint, everyone is not working from the day one. Developers are working, then QAs are taking it up. QAs are just sitting, no having, not just sitting for the first three days or something like that. So this is, this is one of the agile anti pattern that they work sequential. Now the scrum master, the scrum master role is most misrepresented. Just a facilitator of the scrum meetings, no. They are the coach as well. And we have to talk more about it. How agile anti patterns is just paralyzing the scrum role, scrum master role. Yeah, scrum events, you know, all the benefits of scrum events are something like spoiled. We are, our agile anti patterns are just making these things not so effective. We have to see how we can prevent it. And in the end, we have to see how our agile metrics, which are telling we are on track or not, is getting impacted because of these agile anti patterns. As we said, we are going to first talk about how we can quickly identify these agile anti patterns. First of all, you can think about all the norms, all the processes, which are impacting the team overall, which is having negative impact over the organization project. And you can say adaptability is a core benefit of Agile and it's impacting that and every other benefits of it. 
then these are few common identification. Other symptoms are decreased productivity, work quality, lots of free work, disengagement, dissatisfaction among all the stakeholders, customers, team. And at the, in the end, this is impacting our budget timelines and uh, overall uh, many other things which we'll be talking about. Last symptom is we are having less flexibility, less adaptability. We are going rigid. These are all quick symptoms which you can identify. Let's move to our next slide. Bugs. I think many of us can relate that bugs are our uninvited guest. No one ready for those. We sometimes add buffer, but we always think and pray. Hopefully, there will be no bugs. But sometimes you have seen that bugs are keep increasing with each running sprint. First of all, let's clearly distinguish, distinguish between bugs and user stories. User stories are delivering value. Bugs can help in delivering those values. Means bug fix can help in delivering those values, but bugs are not expected. So these are not similar to user stories. User stories are expected. We need to have separate tracking mechanism. Don't give story points to your bugs. Otherwise, you know, team will have more bugs, more story points. But the value driven out of sprint is diluted. Biggest agile interpreter. You add story points to your bugs, objective of sprint is completely diluted. Now, as a team, we created these bugs. We are honor of these bugs. Story points are something like rewards. We're getting some uh, thing like we completed one feature, one, one login page, we completed something, and now we can are celebrating it, that our sprint is achieved high velocity, high story points. But if we think about bugs, what we are getting out after solving it, if we don't add story points, then we have to have ownership of those because we introduced those bugs. You cannot estimate those. There is no scope of the bugs. One of my technical colleague, I had a very lengthy discussion with him. And we were talking about, I was saying, why can't you estimate the bugs? And he told me in then and convinced me that you cannot estimate the bugs. And the basic reason is there is no scope of it. Sometimes you can just fix the bug by just adjusting some code lines. And sometimes it is so hard to investigate where the problem actually is. Sometimes it is just a content issue. So if you have to actually estimate the bug, it is equivalent to solving it. The best is prioritize your bugs, sequence your bugs, top priority bug, less priority bug, second priority, third priority, fourth priority. You can sequence all your bugs and fix timeline for it. Like we will give fixed two days in each sprint or we will give fixed one day to fix the top most bugs. You have to analyze your bug matrix separately. Might be you are having, say, every sprint 10% bugs. You are saying now this is increasing. We have every sprint 15% bugs, or it's decreasing. We have our technical management in place. There is no issues now. You can see the units which are giving to bugs without story points are still trackable. One uh, quick story I will share. Consider you have to drive 100 miles. And when you have to drive 100 miles, your average could be 50 miles per hour if you take two hours. Now you end up taking a wrong route, but you luckily got one highway in between. Now you drove faster. In 2.5 hours, you covered 150 miles. Now you might say, my average is increased 60 miles per hour, and I achieve more effectiveness, efficiency because of it. But that's not the fact. You have consumed more fuel you have consumed more time. Similarly, is to the bugs. You cannot count as your success if you solved 100 bugs or something. Definitely, it's an achievement, but it is not something normal thing, which is expected. So never count as a bugs from the story point of view, because then you will dilute your user story's effectiveness. We are moving to the next slide, and we see how agile anti-patterns are badly impacting us when we are talking about DSMs, how we can make these DSMs more impactful. First of all, avoid adding lots of participants in your DSM. I've seen clients saying, can you add me in the DSM? Mastically, no, no to that. The main reason is 
it will bring distractions. Team will feel a bit nervous. Team might not share all the blocks. Identify only the essential participants for your DS. Strictly 15 minutes, not more than that. Keep figuring out what can you what can you do to reduce your meeting duration to that. And first of all, you have to make sure that only required people are there, developers, QA, who are working day-to-day -day basis on the work. And they are only in DS. I can understand. Everyone needs updates. There is asynchronous communication for non-essential participants. And still, if some people want to join, add them as an optional attendee. They can join for some time, some meetings they can join, but not regularly all the DSNs. Have your clear expectation out of your DSN. Only three basic questions we everyone knows, but we are easily getting distracted. So give the benefit of discussing these three questions. What are our blockers? What we did yesterday, what we are doing today. But apart from it, what is the benefit of discussing this in DSM? Is the clear expectation from each one that will help them to remain on this topic, not going doing side discussions. You have to increase active participation. We usually seen that what happened up that only uh, Scrum Master or project manager or the team lead end up talking about the progress and the team is completely silent. No, everyone just sharing what they have achieved, what are their blockers and what they're doing. So for that, they have to be very active in the call. It's not a status report meeting. They are not judged how much percentage work is done. They do just share what they're doing. As I said before, three questions, just simple. Let's look into our next slide. And it is talking about how sprint velocity can remain unaffected by change request, agile anti patterns. First of all, see uh, how all things, the first step of achieving high sprint velocity starts before sprint starts. As a team, we are ensuring that we are doing doing effective grooming calls, refinement calls before the sprint starts. In the current sprint, the team is giving some fixed time for backlog refinement so that the upcoming sprint is having a ready backlog, sprint backlog to work upon. Conduct effective sprint planning. Sprint planning should not include the grooming work. It should have groom tickets where team will think how they can divide these tasks into small pieces. They can think who will do what, when. One of the biggest mistake we do is as a part of agile entity pattern. You never think about sprint goals. And this is the reason we easily get distracted from our agile uh, sprint goal. Think about if the sprint goal is just to achieve um, payment page, login page, then they can have that as the value in the end they have to deliver. And any derivation whenever come, they can compare from their sprint goal. Always have a sprint goal. This thing is many of us might have heard it uh, first time, but it is definition of ready. When you're starting a sprint, we have to just make sure that uh, it's having essential elements in it. My, uh, you can say acceptance criteria. We can say uh, test cases, UI UX designs, uh, customer accepted the acceptance criteria. So as per the project need stakeholder, we can have some checklist ready. Now, before we start our sprint, we have this each and every ticket verified against this definition of ready checklist. Sprint backlog should never be changed regularly, but you know, nothing is perfect in this world. What happens if something is coming to us, we cannot deny to the client if it is coming urgently. But let's not make a habit of it. If something is coming so urgently, we can take it up, but we have to discuss how we can avoid that thing in future. So don't take it as a habit or normal procedure that every time sprint backlog are changed. Whenever it happens, work with the client, establish your clear change request uh, control practices. Like we have to get all the requirements of one sprint before for the sprint. So all these things will help us 
in increasing the sprint velocity, effectiveness, efficiency of the sprint, and how you can see agile interpretance can be uh, mitigated. But we know that everything which we plan is not going to happen in that way. We'll talk more about the sprint retrospectives, how agile interpretance are impacting those. But I'm talking a bit about it here as well, because if any of the work plan or more plans are not working, and you are having a chance to talk about it, about the problems, about the failures in the sprint retro, you can immediately fix it for before the upcoming sprint. If you don't do that, the team will start having, nurturing the habit of doing some norm, which is actually the agile anti-pattern. So you can detect all your agile anti-pattern by sprint retrospective meetings. And doing it on time will help you fix it on time. Let's move to our next slide. We must have all heard many waterfalls or waterfalls and why and how it's happening in Agile and what role Agile anti-patterns are playing in making it in our Scrum sprint, sprints and Scrums. We have seen that uh, first of all, why only Scrum master product owner are like advocating all the good things, fruits of Agile. We have to make sure the team is having that understanding. They have agile mindset. When everyone is like uh, advocating all these benefits, like uh, I would give an example. If uh, we have them knowing the benefits of retrospective meetings, then team will by themselves will say, we should be discussing in retro meeting. We are waiting for the retro meeting so that we can talk about it. Instead of saying, let's skip the retro meeting. When you hear these words, you can understand that there is something you can help your team to understand the agile mindset. Keeping these things within only few roles, Scrum Master, Product Owner, is the biggest agile uh, anti-pattern. We have to see how we can start delivering value. All team members from the day one contributing value in this sprint. That is the best way to avoid mini waterfalls. We can try different ways, iterative way, incremental development approach, or we can talk to the team, how we can, how, and everyone, how you can contribute value from the day. Consider this question is coming to a tester. And they say, I can read the acceptance criteria and can develop test cases from the day one, even if I don't have a user story to test. These test cases will help me when these stories are coming to me to test. So they will find their way to in be involved from the day one. You can involve SMEs. So if they are not able to figure out a solution, more experienced people like an SME can help them. So another thing is when we commit, we it will be more able to follow it. As a team, if they are committing to some output, some value, sprint goal, then their commitment will make them find the solutions whenever they face the problem. And that collaborative sprint planning will help them uh, commit. So avoid sprint planning meeting. We'll talk more about in upcoming slide. Avoid sprint planning meeting just between few roles and that team should join it so that you can get their commitment. Time box. Time box all the activities. Now how it is linked to waterfall in Agile. Basic thing is if you don't time box, team will start skipping many of the essential recommendations like retro meeting if you end up taking too much time, sprint planning if you end up taking too much time there. People will start skipping. If people think there are four developers, why can't only one developer will join it? So time boxing will help make sure that all are heavily involved in all these ceremonies and which will help them to share their problems, problems, solutions, and hence avoiding the mini waterfall. If you don't time box it, one of the agile anti pattern will impact everywhere. Regularly review it. As a Scrum Master, we can get a glimpse of it, what's going wrong in DSM. We can do quick calls with a QA. Just an example, Sprint is running. We get in touch with a QA or any team member, just 15 minutes quick call, and we can see their confidence level. You can get, you can get the gist of it. You can see the, they might be saying, we are not going to achieve our sprint goal or we are on track, how they say. So these reviews by a DSM, by a quick calls 
can help you remain on the path of agile. Scrum master. This role is very badly impacted by agile anti-pattern. We make scrum master the project manager. And sometimes I've seen, we say we have scrum master, he's also playing product owner role. Oh my God. They really are so much badly impacted because one of the biggest agile anti pattern here is we think Scrum Master is just to facilitate facilitate the Scrum events, nothing else. But that's not the fact. We have to understand what actually Scrum Master role is. If you read, I will not talk much about what Scrum Master role is, but I will guide you like uh, the basic importance of it and basic few steps of it. You have to make sure that uh, as a scrum master, the team is getting enough guidance, coaching, mentoring, so they can organize themselves. So scrum master is also making sure that team is, you can, you can take it in this way. Why scrum master only needs to be the guardian of everything? Each team member is like a mini scrum master. You convince one person the benefit of it. That person will be convinced and convincing other people. But if you just instruct them, they will not be, it will be always your responsibility to always instruct them, monitor them. But it's not going to help in the long run. Every time you have 10 team members, you will feel drained. Every time you have too much metrics to look into, make sure that everyone is on track. But why everyone is not looking by themselves? So basic thing is coming in form of coaching and mentoring the team members. Scrum master, one of the 50% work, I would say. Another one is, I would say, never navigate your team. As a scrum master, we sometimes navigate retrospective calls or completely control that calls. Only scrum master 90% talking at that time. How dangerous. They're facilitated. They are not the main person in the meeting. They are facilitating the communication and collaboration. As you can see, many of such things are badly impacting the agile uh, structure. If you talk with openness with your, with your organization, they will support because what happens, Scrum Master having multiple teams to take care of. They are also asked to do the project manager operational work. But if you tell them the benefit of coaching and mentoring the team and facilitating, and facilitation is harder than navigating. It takes more time. And promoting the self-organization with the team and how the roadmap will help the entire team and future projects and upcoming uh, any team members who will join the group, then they will support. Let's take a minute towards uh, where we are right now, I think it's a it's a scrum events and which are sometimes hijacked. So how we can avoid it? I told before also like uh, when when we are just keeping the responsibility with the scrum master to make sure everyone is joining retro DSM doing sprint planning. And it's too much. When we have clear objectives and everyone is now helping in planning it, then it is the real achievement. And then your events will not be hijacked. Everyone is talking about, okay, benefits of retrospective. I see the upcoming sprint is not having, is having the higher velocity. I can see we are better planned for it. When they can see the objective very clearly in front of them, they will be they will be also asking for it. Facilitate active participant participation. You might notice some some people in your team are not contributing hundred percent in all the events. You can talk to them, make sure that they are able to contribute in upcoming events. Now, as a Event if in an event, if everyone is participating, you will see the energy. And that energy will make sure that every team member will be asking of such events again and again. So active participation increase the morale and end up making them join all the events on time. 
but make sure these are time boxes. Uh, we, these are having limited time too, because uh, if you give too much time, they will be having less bandwidth to work and they will start skipping. So if you time box your events, it will also make sure that people are joining these events. Just an example, if your DSM is always taking one hour and you, uh, or half an hour, then people will think a one hour giving to DSM is too much. But if you time box it to just 15 minutes, people will think, okay, 15 minutes meeting, every one of us can easily join it. Prepare the agenda and share the agenda before. A quick example, not only agenda, you can do some homework, just prepare the retrospective board and share with the team a day or two before and add, ask them to add the problems they are facing. Now your retrospective meeting will be done on time because all the problems are already stated there. You can do one thing, as a scrum master, go there, club all the common problems which is shared by the team in one segment. And now when you're running this retrospective meeting, everyone will be able to see groups of the problems. This will help. This will help to make sure that uh, a little bit of preparation sharing agenda uh, can reduce your time you're taking in meeting. And also it will increase the interest of everyone. Be assertive. If there's some deviation from the calls, you have to push back. Increase, increase uh, follow-up, increase follow-up discussions because if you're doing something like a retrospective meeting and then there is no fruits in the end or no actions are taken care of, the team will think, okay, we are always joining the retrospective meeting, but we are never taking any action items. So they will say there is no benefit of joining the retro meeting. Make sure you are having some action. I know might not be all top five, top three, whatever possible. At least there will be something to talk about that from last retrospective, we are able to implement some changes. In the end, it's everyone's responsibility. So culture of collaboration will help to make sure agile events are not skipped. Agile matrix. Agile matrix is biggest, uh, one of the biggest agile entity pattern is that it is just between the scrum master product owner. Main time team is just thinking velocity as a sort of fancy term. It's not the fact. As a scrum master, we have to let them know what it is. When they are able to understand what is the burn report, what is the velocity, they will be able to help contribute. I will give you an example. If you're driving a car and you can't see the speedometer, your guardians are able to see that speedometer. And then they will say, hey, drive slow. And you are driving slow. Now, they will say speedometer is going too down and they will say drive fast. Now you will drive fast. How it will, how it sounds. Is anyone doing like that? Of course not. Then why we are doing when we are running our scrum? Why we are doing in SL? Team should able to see these parameters very on time. They can see if we are running fast, if we are running slow, and that will help them to adjust. Each matrix benefit they should be shared. What is the benefit of availability ratio? What is the benefit of high velocity? How you can read the burn reports? What is the benefit of it? You will get a chance in retrospective meeting to talk about like your metrics. You can say we have received less velocity and it means that. Conduct regular reviews and discussion over these. The contribution from the team will increase. Small increments can be a target, something like 5% availability ratio needs to increase. Now ask everyone, hey, what could be the target? The team can themselves contribute, can themselves commit, okay, let's achieve 5% increment in the availability ratio. So that will be help you, that will help you to refine your agile metrics. And never ever do any alteration to your agile metrics. Sometimes to you show high velocity to the client have some hidden buffer from the team, have very openness in front of the team. You have to share with complete transparency what are all data. Key takeaways. These are like few quick action items. We talked about a lot of the points here, but uh, it is too much to remember. If you just count few things as a quick action items, then these are always consider that there is a, negative impact on every person 
of Azrael and Tibet. It's impacting everyone. Bugs, avoid story points to bugs and add fixed time approach for bugs. Avoid inviting everyone in the meetings. You can see who is contributing what in advance plan it. If you are one of the participants, think how you're going to contribute. Definition of ready. Before you start anything, sprint, even retro events, even the DSM, you can think what is the what you can achieve out of it. Even you can say, this is our checklist for making sure this ticket is ready to be taken in a sprint. Prevent many waterfalls. Everyone, simple question to everyone is how you can start adding value from the day one in a sprint. That is a very easy way which will avoid mini waterfalls in other. Scrum master role. This is just not a facilitator. Scrum master is also a coach. So you have to understand scrum master role a bit more to avoid agile anti patterns. And very firm on agile ceremonies. You might have to be very assertive, but be kind. Make sure everyone is advocating and for that, you have to help them understand it. And it is rolling back us to the Scrum Master coaching role. And everything is so linked, you can see. Let's see the last point here is Agile metrics. Agile metrics is just conduct regular reviews with team. And everything will be automatically coming as a solution. When you will talk about Agile metrics with the team, they will start giving solutions. Let's take quick questions. All right, thanks. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. You can come up to the mic and ask. No, okay. Um, I, I had a question about the, um, I guess it was, you were talking about um, time boxing meetings. And yeah, I guess I was thinking, you know, that probably works pretty well for, um, you know, like the daily scrum meeting, but sometimes uh, like sprint planning, it seems like maybe that could go longer. Um, and I, I guess I've heard of there being an approach of like, you know, sprint planning is going to just go until we all agree on what the sprint is going to be. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you have any uh, any sort of uh, you know qualifiers for the um, you know the time boxing of of all the meetings or just some of them. I can help you how we can do it. Is okay from the. One thing no one is of us, uh, no one of us are perfect and we cannot achieve that every time our sprint planning will be ending on time. If it is happening that it is going to take more time, let it take its more time. At that point of time, stopping is not going to help. But noting down what can be done better next time, like definition of ready. Most of the sprint planning meetings are taking more time because half of the time we are figuring out what to do. If we have our if we have our something like a homework ready, which is backlog grooming before the sprint planning, then in sprint planning, hardly we have to decide who will do what, in what sequence. And if we have to break our stories, what story points we have to give, that's it. But if we are including deep dive discussion on understanding some user story, adding lots of grooming inputs there, then definitely it's going to take time. At that point of time, stopping won't help because, but at that time, just note down what's not working well. And from the next time, be better ready. And small increment if your uh, say sprint planning meeting is taking double time. Next time we can target just 50% more time. Then a bit 10%, 20% more time. Then might be just on time. Agile basically is talking about incremental improvements. Sudden change, it's never talking about that. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good approach. Appreciate that. So I think, uh, I think that's it, unless there are any more questions. I think we're probably good.
All right. Well, thanks.